Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Okay, I want to speak about dry fasting and you know having PCOS. And this is for people who are fasting for spiritual reasons or for health. Um, for me personally, I am I generally only dry fast for the month of Ramadan. Um, so that's the intermittent fasting for 29 to 30 days. Um, and it's basically based around up to, depending on where you live, between the hours of sunrise and sunset. So for me, it clocks about 18 and a half hours on my end for my dry fast. Now, um, and I know like for, there's many um, uh, religious uh, uh, perspectives and cultural perspectives that do dry fasting, um, different also ideological stances on fasting itself that do dry fasting. But it's funny with all of that information out there and ways of life's out, uh, lives out there, I could not find supportive, um, let's say, information in terms of PCOS in women who fast or dry fast. I couldn't get any feedback, so I thought I should upload this and share my experience. Um, so I should also preface this by saying that fasting is not for everyone and fasting in a certain time and place in someone's life may be, may be not the right time for their hormone health. And the reason I'm saying this is there's a lot of guilt around taking care of health, especially when it comes to within one's ideological framework of fasting. The purpose of fasting is for spiritual reasons for some and health. And a lot of times people who do it for spiritual reasons are not realizing it's also for health um, and may realize it's for health and they feel like they should push through. However, that can be more detrimental. So just listen to your main messenger, which is your body, that's indicating to you what you should be doing and not. I know people who have fainted. Um, I know people who have um, gotten quite sick uh, because they persisted with the fasting and this is across the board. Um, so I'm just letting, you know, just saying that it's not always for everyone. I think that's a very important conversation to have. It seems to be the be all end all, whether it's intermittent fasting or dry fasting. Um, it's, uh, you know, um, it seems to be, there's big major pressure around that. So I just want to clear that. Okay. So when it comes to the fast and I'm just going to share my tidbits on it. So let's say you're dry fasting for whatever purposes and you're doing it intermittently, meaning that you're eating, um, you know, you have an eating window. And then you have a block, let's say, in 18 to 19 hours of fasting. So, and you're not t intaking nothing. So what do you do? The first thing is this. This is going to relate more to people who are insulin resistant like me, because my channel is on my experience. Um, there's many PCOS women out there that don't have this issue, that they can really eat anything at any point and not have insulin highs and lows. Um, so that's great. Um, some of you uh, may have a hypoglycemic response um, only when you fast. So that also is a very niche group that just has a response like that when they're fasting, but when they're eating regularly, they're fine. So that too is something to consider. For me, I'm insulin resistant, so it's a very sensitive thing to fast. So um, I'm going to speak about what to do for dry fasting. Intermittent fasting, I'll speak about that some other time in terms of my experience and how I find that I struggle with that as well. Um, even when I, I take intake water and coffee. Um, I do struggle with it, but with dry fasting, it's a harder struggle because now you have a window, which is very beneficial to balancing insulin, but the symptoms can be very exasperated. So, okay. So for me, how to begin. So I, my mistakes I should share first. My mistake, first of all, was thinking that it should be upping carbohydrates when I'm on a low carb diet generally, and I know that's best for my system, I somehow felt or believed that I should change it. So the biggest mistake that I made was changing my diet and really increasing the carbohydrate uh, carbohydrate level, especially when it was time to eat. That's when everything went cha chaotic for me. So I'll give an example. So I'm doing this, you know, low carb uh, thing. And now I go into fasting mode and I know it's a dry fast coming up and I panic and I think that I need more carbohydrates because it's a dry fast as compared to a fast that I can drink water in. So in my mind, I'm thinking I have to be hydrated. How am I going to stay hydrated? So I just intake a lot of the sugary kind of fruits and everything. Um, and you know, that's what I'm thinking that should sustain my fast. So my fast was harder because I felt more hungry, I had more crashes, I had a headache, and um, it didn't do me any any good, except for one part was I did not feel as thirsty. So I thought, okay, it kind of hit the mark for my thirst issue, 
but it killed off the other benefits or uh, uh, my maintenance, let's say. So it was very difficult. Um, who wants a migraine through the day? So that was um, one of the pieces there. So I had to retweak that to realize that I can hydrate through vegetables, which Dr. Berg, is, uh, Berg talks about all the time. You know, cucumber, celery, bell peppers, they're all hydrating foods. And I could just have that and other, you know, other vegetables. So that's the case is resolved. Now, in terms of opening and breaking the fast, that's when it's hard. Here you have dry fasted all day. You want to dig into that delicious strawberry or some other fruit or people, for some people, it's dates. Um, for me, I stay away. I was thought I was being smart. I was staying away, staying away from the dates, which is a traditional, you know, way to open um, and break the fast. So I'm like, that's high glycemic. I'm not touching that. So I broke it with a strawberry, and that was another issue with immediate migraine headache. So insulin sensitivity and the food quality is even more paramount because you have not had anything all day, nothing. Where because even coffee can spike a little bit, not too much, some insulin, but not too much. Uh, there's still something coming in, and you're hydrating, and you have the electrolytes with their hemolytic salts to the day, so it's a little bit easier, quote unquote. But with dry, you have nothing, so now your system is now opening, and the insulin is going to be very quick in releasing insulin uh, because you're now intaking this food. The reaction is going to be faster. So I learned. No, and again, Dr. Berg and Tom, Thomas and Lara speak about this on their channels, uh, that you should be breaking the fast with a protein and fat. That's it. That should be what you should be breaking with depending on what kind of diet you are. And actually, to be honest, whatever diet you're on, it doesn't matter. That insulin has now just kind of tapered off, and you now are going to begin eating again. So you want to be very careful in terms of what you're going to put into your mouth you know, in the first few bites. After that, waiting 15, 20 minutes, you know, whatever diet you are on, just jump right into it. But just be careful when you break the fast. Um, so that's basically what, you know, um, the recommendation I would have. Doesn't matter what diet you're on, high carb, low carb, moderate carb, whatever it is. Um, and I should also indicate, don't change your diet right before any kind of fast, like a dry fast. Um, I did that a few years back when I was beginning the low carb journey and keto and I would say I could say that was my worst worst experience with fasting because I decided that I was going to be smart and I would suddenly do this you know dietary change while simultaneously doing a dry fast and it was very detrimental to me I missed a few fasts um, I felt like it really messed me up because uh, getting off of the sugar and getting off of um, certain foods at a sensitive time when your body is just um, trying to deal with now not eating, because uh, I wasn't intermittent fasting at that time either, prior to the dry fast, the body was in, in more of a shock. So if you can see what I'm trying to say here is take things gradually, allow your body to adapt as you're slowly changing your um, system and the responses and listening to those responses. Um, also too, in me, as I mentioned before, the increased um, intake of fruits really had an opposite effect for me recently. Like I did this recently, like within you know a few days ago. Because uh, I thought, well, I don't want to stay, like I want to stay hydrated. What's the best way I can stay hydrated? And it just, sometimes, you know, you just think, okay, maybe fruits is harmless. It's not a big deal, but again, they are high. Um, glycemic index and with the way I was going it was not a good good decision so this is basically what you know overall what I recommend and state is going back to the basics here is hydration have your your vegetables um, if you're um, high carb even make sure you're choosing whole foods good carbs make sure there's no sugar but if you are on a high sugar diet already prior to starting maintain your diet but be, choose more healthy options if possible um, and then clear diet as you go further because that will impact your um, fast. Now the fatigue when it comes to fasting, um, the fatigue with uh, PCOS is no joke. For me it's up and down and I've tried it you know, with them um, eating my supplements. I mean again keep your, keep your supplement intake for sure during especially during the uh, before you begin, to begin your dry fast but doing everything and you just cannot predict the energy level. It's almost impossible. Um, get your rest when needed. Be gentle with yourself. Um, if you need to 
not do extra activities after work and so forth. Do that. Um, you know, just do be gentle, think, uh, be clear, and um, take the time needed to sustain the energy that you need. Uh, ask for help when needed, especially like, you know, preparing foods to begin eating and if you're with a family, ask for help. These are important things, especially as women, um, especially, you know, as PCOS sufferers. Um, the most, and you're, if you're fasting and going through this experience is uh, self-care awareness is important too and, you know, collaboration. Now, if you live on your own, that's a different story, but if you're living with others, you know, ask for help. That's uh, pretty important. So I hope this helps somewhat. I just, you know, feedback, let's have a conversation. Again, as I said, dry fasting is a common thing across the globe. Uh, many women do it, and it would be quite nice to know what everyone does to sustain the dry fast effectively for them. Um, any questions or comments, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll be in touch again soon. Take care. Bye.